Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson and welcome to one of my video lessons. Today is a challenge actually, we're going to be painting a bird, which is something quite normal I know, but quite small, much smaller than the way I would normally paint a bird. But trying to keep the reference photograph to the similar size all the way through the painting to that painting, rather than pinching into all the details. Because the problem that we tend to have is that when we pinch into those details, we'll find that sometimes we're trying to paint too many details when really in reality, when it's that sort of size on the paper, you can't really see them, can you? But of course, if you wanted to paint this that little bit bigger, then you can do, it's not a problem at all. This is just my challenge to you today. I'm gonna to be using two different brushes today. In fact, I'll tell a fib there. I just start off with a longer bristle brush, which was this one here. And I find that the bristle's a little bit too long on that one, which means there's a lot of flex within the bristles, isn't there? So when you're trying to pinpoint those fine details on something so small, it's not always as easy to kind of get that little tiny point in the right place you've got this sort of flex on the bristles. Whereas I want something a little bit shorter on the bristles, which is this blue one here, the Cotman one, Winter Newton. And I find that one a little bit easier to kind of fine tune those details with, because there's less flex within them bristles. So with something like that, it'd be okay for doing things like whiskers, that sort of thing really. But for me, yeah, I prefer the shorter bristles in this case. Now the full version of painting the Spotted Pardalo is on my Patreon channel and also nearly 160 other video lessons as well at the time of this recording of course for you to have a go at. But if joining isn't for you today I do have a free section on there where I've got complete videos from start to finish for you to have a go at and that includes a reference photograph and that outline drawing as well. So have a look in the description down below and click on that link. Paint in the eye. I know it's tiny isn't it? Really tiny. But this is a challenge that I've got for you today. You want to make sure that the tip of the brush is very lightly touching the paper. And I mean just caressing that surface of the paper. And if you overload that brush, then you find what will happen is that your lines will be far too thick. So even though we've got to load it more often, because there's obviously less paint on them bristles, that will in turn give you the finest of lines that you can get with that particular brush. And also it depends on how heavy your hand is on that paper. So within the eye, we've got a little bit of reflection in there and just a touch of colour as well. So we're going to be popping that colour in and probably reserving the white of the paper for the reflection. And if we don't reserve the white of the paper, just pop in a little bit of watercolour white or white gouache in there instead. Just kind of put that little bit of sparkle and life within the eye. The eye isn't um, kind of level like that. It's a bit of a tilt. Because the corners of the eyes, I'll show you on the video, the corners of the eyes have got a bit of an angle. So instead of being level, as you're going to see, the kind of tilted slightly to one side. So the left hand side down, right hand side up a little bit. So you've got to really think about the lines around the eye and the eye ring itself, and also the details within it. And then we've got to think about painting that beak. Now again, it's quite small, and there's not a lot of detail that you can see within that beak. Not when you've got the photograph kind of squeezed down to the similar size of this. So you can't really see a great deal. But you can still see the gentle blend of colours within there. I'd say colours are really sort of bluey black for the top part of the beak there, isn't there? And the way the beak sort of gently fades from the tip of the beak, which is a little bit dark, as you can see, and gradually gets lighter as it works its way towards the nostril and then the face. And also notice that the lower mandible, the lower part of the beak, is very dark as well. But we're going to do that in layers as well. So we'll start off with the lightest colour first of all, and gradually build those colours up as you go along. Then, once the beak is painted, we're going to start thinking about putting the basic foundation washes on the body. So to do that, what we've got to consider it's all the washes behind the scenes, so everything behind those details. So look deep through those details, and I mean deep, really deep. And then you can start to see the colours behind the scenes. Once you've applied those background foundation washes onto the body and the wings as well, then we can start to consider painting all the details around the face. Now there's a lot of detail there, isn't there? There really is. And when we look at that photograph, the same size as your painting, you can see there's a lot of detail around that area, but notice the directions of all them details. They do change, don't they? You know, and the way that um, some of the areas around the face sort of fans out like that. Well, put that one up as well. Sort of fans out, and because they fan out, them little fan areas change direction as you work your way around the face. And also the way they sort of curve underneath the face as well. But notice the way that the details go on the back of the bird. And the way that, again, you've got all the different shapes involved within there. Now, I don't want to cover all that background up detail work. I know that watercolour is obviously transparent. The problem is if you put too much detail on there sometimes, they just completely obliterate all them foundation washes. So allow those colours to show through. Leave gaps in between those details when you're working on it. Now, don't forget to like down there and subscribe as well to this video, because if you do, 
Every time I put a brand new video here on YouTube for you to watch, you shouldn't miss it. Now the wing feathers are really good fun to work on because you've got to maintain those fine lines. What you can do, depends on if you're left or right-handed, you can turn the painting around, upside down, <laughs> and then you can paint them that way around because I've noticed that these lines within the wing feathers just got a very slight curve to them. And because you've got a slight curve, you can think about the natural curve of your hand and your wrist like this. And because of that, you can actually get an easier line by painting that way around. If I turned it this way around, and I tried it being a lefty, then I'm going the wrong way because my natural arc is this way, isn't it? Rather than that way. See what I mean? So if it makes it easier, turn it upside down. And they also the same with the reference photograph as well. And you'll find that much easier to get those lines in there. Then we need to think about adding the details within those little lines. Just slightly horizontal details, but very, very fine indeed. And then we can start thinking about working around the belly area. Now, these are quite light lines, aren't they? Very light colours. And all we're simply doing is enriching the colours we've already made within our mixing palette. As you can see, there aren't that many colours within here. So because of that, you know, it makes it a little bit easier trying to get all the colours mixed up in the first place. Now, one thing I always do before starting a watercolour painting is test out the colours, work out the colours that you need for that subject. At least then, when you're working on the main painting itself, you know, there's a good chance you've got the colours about right. And if you get the colours wrong, you don't do this, first of all, you get the colours wrong on the paper within the painting itself, then you find it's difficult to correct those colours. You start adding colours on the top, trying to change those colours a little bit, and you find it's very difficult to kind of twist it back around again. And some of the colours, when we apply them to the watercolour paper, don't lift off that easy, do they? because some of the colours are quite staining. And because of that, then you find you can't get back to the white of the paper to correct your mistake along the way. So always do plenty of colour testing before you make a start on that painting. Test, test, test. Now when you work on the darker colours, you've got to really consider how dark they need to be. Are they really dark? Are they pitch black? Not necessarily. And I'm not using lamp black or a standard black paint. I'm actually making my own black through this one. You can use black paint if you want to. Well, mix another colour with it, because black on its own can look a little bit flat. But in this case, I've made a mix of French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna for a nice black colour. And you can see that's quite evident within the painting. Now, what I wanted to make sure that I've got with this one is not to go too dark, because if you do, it could completely kill all the colours underneath, which it will. Just darker down the bottom of the wings, and then gradually gets lighter as it works its way towards the top of the body. But don't go too dark. Do the same with the head as well. You find the very top of the head it's slightly bluer. There's not really a lot of blue in the bird, I know, but you've got to fade that black out a little bit when you get towards the top of the head. Again, try and think about the shape and the form of the bird all the time. If I just simply blacked in the head itself, do you find it could look a little bit too flat? We sure don't want that to happen, do we? Then we've got to think about painting those legs and the feet as well. Now, once again, using the very tip of the brush, it's a little bit of a colour wash on the top of them first of all. Once you've got that wash on, then you can start thinking about adding the details within the legs and also the feet. I'm also thinking about the shape within the toes at the same time, and also the shape within the legs. Also notice the left hand leg as we look at it, is that a little bit darker, isn't it? So that's obviously because of the shadow being cast from the body. So we've got to make sure we paint it that way as well by just adjusting our colors accordingly really with that. So that's what I did with that. Do the same with the toes and the feet. Think about the shape of each individual section as you work your way down. So basically the colors on the lower parts of the toes and the legs as well, where the light doesn't quite hit it properly, does it? So they're darker, they're richer in tone. So you've got to lighten that as you work your way up the toe to the very top of the toe. Think about the curvature of each individual section within the legs and the feet. The claws are not black. They're like a deep blue, like a gray blue color. And then we've got to paint that branch. A very simple, straightforward branch. Also considering the shape of the branch as well. I want to get that sort of round feel to it. And I do that by increasing the amount of colour which I've got on the underside of the branch and then decreasing it as you work your way back towards the top of the branch. And that's just by using very small simple marks within that branch. So increase the amount of detail on the lower part and decrease it as you work your way up. And then, once you've got all the colours on there, just a tiny amount of watercolour white to add a bit of sparkle to the top of that branch. Now if you want to learn a little bit more about painting birds in watercolour, have a look at the video to the top right hand corner of the screen. I'll see you there.